nag-multi story. First story was basically um kala ni Kawai, usual runaway case. Pero upon well upon some deep diving by um incidental deep diving ni ni Fuji, ayun, nalaman pala. Ni rate pala ng ng stepfather yung babae na yung runaway girl. Kaya pala luma kaya pala madalas lumaya sa bahay ito. She wants to escape her stepfather's uh, cruelty. Sexual cruel cruelty. So wow. And right there and then nakalata na agad ni, ni Fuji that there's something There's something more disturbing than uh, to this girl than uh, uh, than just flat out running away from their, from her parents. So, galing. Second story naman was about um, a case of sexism that stemmed out of domestic violence. Siyempre, uh, renewing all the acquaintances with um with this certain with this girl that replaced her there. So, kain sila. Okay? Sa cafeteria. Then, bigla may nagsisigaw ni Rito na lalaki na mukha ni Kawai. Ito yung ito yung boyfriend na ito yung boyfriend ng kalipin ng biktima na na ng bumugbog. Okay? Ito yung source ng domestic violence. So, asa, asa, asa may girlfriend ko? Eh, labas nyo, labas nyo. So, nagsis, nagsisigaw, causing rockles there. Sinabi ng ni ni Minataka, okay, yung kasama ni kas, dating kasama ni Fuji don. Please sir, do not raise your voice inside a government building. Si Shepre, person in authority, eh, police yun eh. Lumabas ang pagka-sexist ng lalaking to. Yeah, sabi to this effect. Sabi to this effect, sinabi ng sinabi ng mokong na to. I am not going to talk to a woman. Give me a real police man. I mean, this is not what. So from behind, um, not to what things see Fuji. Uh, what's wrong, sir? What's the, what seems to be the problem? So yon. Eh, nakita niya another woman. Tama niya. Gusto ko may kausap ako. Gusto ko may kausap ako ng lalaki police. Sa kanya lang. Sa isang lalaki. Well, oh, sa tito si Max. Sa isang lalaki police na ako ako usap. So, tinuro ni Fuji yung isang interrogation room. O, sige po, sir. Dito po tayo. We can talk. We can talk inside here. So, pag pa, pagpasok niya, may naka eh, may nakatabay na palang detective doon na talagang wow, he's scary looking. Mas mukhang criminal pa kaysa doon sa kaysa, kaysa sa mukhang na to. Mas mukhang criminal pa yung detective. Final scene. But, eventually, um, Nag-apologize din si Minataka kasi for uh, for for throwing sexist remarks also. Kasi nag nag-uusap sila ni Fuji. Of course, uh, they're being sexist as well kasi they're uh, she felt uh, Minataka always felt discriminated by by her her male colleagues kasi siya lang yata nag-iisang babae doon sa Criminal Affairs Division ngayon. So, eh, well, sabi lang, ito pa lang detective na sumalubong doon sa sa sospek, eh, ito pala ang chief nila. Chief mismo ng Criminal Affairs Division. Eh, sabi ng chief, it's okay. Whether you, um, uh, no matter how often you call us, um, chauvinist, uh, gorillas, or parang ganon. Eh, basta sexist remarks against males. You can still rely on us. Yeah, spoken like a true um, spoken like a true professional okay uh, I gotta hand it to the chief it was a fun episode mga mga lifestyle and what well, ano ba ang gawin natin kundi break this episode down now critic sub style base um yung um uh, yung base may ano eh um toggling between slice of life and a uh, flat out comedy. All right? Kasi meron siyang magand- maganda yung pasok ng mga ng mga funny moments dito. 
So the pacing will make you um will make you feel that oi Okay, slice up lang. Oy, moral lesson to. <laughs> Nakakatawa to. Tapos, biglang, ano, taya ka, may kinalagyan ka, ulul. <laughs> Gumagawa na ako. So, only the, only, only a good pacing will make you, um, will make you elicit those emotions while you're watching it. So, maganda ang, maganda ang pacing for both stories. Galing. Pero, um, I can't help but compare it to the Vampire Dice in no time. Kasi isa studio eh. They're both the uh, this and Vampire are both were both are both done by Madhouse. Tatak Madhouse eh. Yung well, let's just say na tatak Madhouse yung humor. Yung biglang biglang para para biglang tinuro ka ng comedy. Mm, matawa ka na. Eh. Ah, ganun nga eh. The PC was really good. I got Nope. I am um, almost flabbergasted with the pacing of this episode. Although it's a multi-story one, huh? Flo naman! Only two gear shifts kasi multi-story episode. So, the biggest gear shift for the first story was when Fuji nung um, i-turn over na nila yung yung, teen, yung, uh, yung teenager sa mga magulang niya. Nakanata niya yung ano eh, yung tawag dito nakalata niya yung takot dun sa stepfather so sinabi niya sinabi niya sa victim kunwari I forgot to get your signature can we go back to the interrogation room o sige syempre sasama yung sasama yung babae at saka syempre si Kawai partner niya why did I call this a gear ship? natural I would not I've been idiot, mga ka lifestyle. If I don't call this a gear shift, kasi dito natin, uh, dito ipinakita ni Fuji ang galing niya bilang polis. Unang tingin pa lang yun sa stepfather, wala na siya tiwala eh. At yung mannerisms ng stepfather towards um towards uh, persons in authority, mga polis, parang ano pa eh, parang gumagal pa eh. Ha? Eh, pinapota yun na niya yung, yung pagsasorry sa, sa mismong nanay. Dito lang na. Ako lang dito lang ako. Dito lang ako. Utang ina, may tinatato pa na itong hayop na to eh. So, ayun. Eventually, Fuji and Kawai found out that this girl is being raped by her stepfather every time her mother's out for work. So, a crime has been solved right there. Ganon kagaling pala itong si Fuji. Unang tingin pala niya, oh, look on there sa, looks like we got a bigger domestic case here. Teka muna. Yung background niya sa criminal affairs served her very well here. Kasi kung pinabayan nila lang uh, uh, iu, iuwi, ng, iuwi ng magulang, wala eh. Hindi malalaman to eh. Hindi malalaman yung tunay na dahilan kung bakit parating naglalaya sa bahay ang babaeng to. Uh, the second and final gear shift, the, the biggest gear shift for the second story is yung when Fuji again, okay, Fuji figures herself in another gear shift. Nung siya mismo na ang humarap dun sa dun sa, sa mokong na nabubugbog dun sa, na binubugbog yung victim ang tinurn over nila sa criminal affairs. Okay, uh, nagsisigaw po naman dun. Oy, nasa ba? Asa may shot up? Asa may shot up? Ayan, why? Uwi ka na! Uwi na tayo! Why did I call this a gear ship? Again! So, kahit na beat cop na lang ngayon si Fuji, hindi ba nawawala yung pagiging detective niya rito? So, right? Pero, she showed a lot of restraint, alright? Kahit, um, she's already thrown sexist remarks by this, um, by this, uh, Ang bite is dickhead. Wala. Talagang, talagang, talagang professional siya. Talagang police. Ang, ang, manner of handling niya. Just goes to show you how, wow, okay? how uncannily good this lead character is. So, dapat lang na may, uh, dapat lang na 
maging mentor ni Kawai ito. She's no ordinary beat cop. Talagang sanay, sanay sa mga ganitong, sa mga ganitong klaseng criminal ito. At saka sinabi pa niya rito, ito ha, this what, this what caused me to, um, to, uh, classify this scene as a gearship. Kasi meron, something to this effect, ganito sinabi ni, ni Fuji. You don't get to choose, um, which cop you want to talk to. But, if you insist, dito tayo, sa, dito tayo sa mga atong to. Binuksan, ayun, may nagabaw ng detective sa kanya. Talagang, talagang lalaki yung itsura. At, mas mukhang kriminal kaysa dun sa, kaysa dun sa suspect. So, <clears throat> what? It just goes to show you how, um, How much, um, how much, uh, cunning this lead character is. How much cunning this lead character has. So, you would all, you would think that. Ooh, ibang discarte ng police na to. Gusto ko to. Gusto ko yung discarte niya. If you did something that's against the law, oh, teka muna. You just, you automatically, given up certain rights. Kaya, manahimig ka. So, ganun lang yun. Ganun lang ang, uh, ganun lang ang concept dun eh. Sa, that, that's the basic concept. Uh, yeah, I think of law enforcement. And this gearship will teach you that. So, these two gearships that I saw, um, may or may not have implications down the line this anime kasi multi-story siya. Ang, forma, ang format nga niya parang The Vampire Dice in no time eh. It may or may not play a role in other episodes. But, you will see the same thing in future episodes. Parang ganun ang sinasabi sa akin ng, ng dalawang gearship na to. So, long term, yup. Expect Fuji to, um, to, to show her, um, to show her cunning as a detective. Even, kahit beat cop na lang siya ngayon. So, expect these kinds of scenarios for the main, for, for the two main protags. Si Fuji at si, si Kawai. Plot-wise, Ganchado. Kasi, here's what's cool about this episode. Ang ganda ng transition between the first and second stories. Talagang, Binanggit ni, binanggit na mga main product dito na, Uy, ah, uh, oh, domestic case na naman. Baka ito, baka ganito rin yung ano, yung last time ah. So, medyo, medyo nag-flashback dun sa first story. Kaya, it's a well-ironed out plot. Kung maga, ang formal parang The Vampire Dice in No Time din eh. The transitioning will make you feel, pero, Iba nito. Kung doon, the transitioning will make you feel like um, the next story happened the next day. Excuse me. Dito, yung transitioning, uh, for, the, well, for this episode at least, it will make you feel that the second story happened hours after the first story. Parang ganun kasi mga big cops sila eh. At every turn, there's a crime, uh, there's a crime being committed. Yeah, the episode made me, the, the overall plot of this episode made me feel that way. See, it, it really felt like, um, here was the first story coming to an end. Then, parang several hours later, yung pangalamang story naman. Talagang mahirap ang buhay ng isang police. Okay? Not only their lives are on the line, but their own, but their own mental health is on the line. Now, I really feel for these cops right now because of this, because of the plot of this particular episode. So the plot was the plot was well ironed out. Okay, yeah, uh, you would actually feel sorry for these cops because talaga mahirap ang trabaho nila. Talagang mga tunay na frontliner ang mga police. 
So face flow and plot. They all came together for this episode. At hindi ko akala yung multi-story. <laughs> hindi ko na-expect to. So, Police in the Pod, Episode 2. Yes, sir. Two thumbs up! Excuse me, I'm gonna get the mic. My guess. What more can I say about this episode? Talagang... Madhouse to. Right? In terms of yung uh, in terms of plot and the um, and and the pacing. Yun lang. In terms of in terms of plot and pacing. But it's humor element so far is not like the vampire dies in no time. No okay? Talagang talagang katawa-tawang animation. And it has so many stories in one episode talagang it'll it'll keep you laughing till the end pero dito may may humor element din siya pero when it needs to get serious it will get serious kasi dalawang kaso nga ito But, wherever you are in the world rape and domestic violence aha they are both serious criminal cases so Teka, huwag muna tayong tumawa. Seryoso ko usapan na to. Madhouse is... Yup, yeah, I think they're... Yeah, I think they're... They're doing it again. Talagang... Whatever emotions they want to um, get out from you, they will get it. And... This anime is no different. Okay? Although, it's, although it's based on another manga. Pero, it has Madhouse's stamp. Um, all over it. Yeah. Thank God for Manhouse. <laughs> After the vampire dies in no time, they gave us this one. So, so far, yeah. Uh, I'm enjoying reviewing this, uh, uh, this new, this new, um, this new outing by Manhouse. So again, the va- oh, no, the vampire dies in no. Boy! Police in a pod! Episode 2! <laughs> Grab it, two thumbs up. Ay, let's go. Two thumbs up for this anime. I almost, I almost said the vampire dies in no time. Oh my god. I just got, sorry, I just couldn't stop comparing this one to that anime. Uh, we all know that the vampire dies in no time made it to the lifestyle 10. Edged out, edging up Tokyo Revengers and Comic Can Communicate. So, lie. Iba na yung ano eh. Iba yung... Well, I wouldn't say that um, Police in a Pod has big shoes to fill. Pe- kasi eh, police comedy naman to eh. Eh, ang vampire, well, horror comedy, uh, dark comedy naman siya. So, medyo iba yung... Iba yung ginatahak nilang daan. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload and... Guys, if you're still stuck on the ARD, no worries. Ain't you glad this this anime got featured in this uh, in this digest? So, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Yung sumo na sarili ko. Bottom line of this of this episode story is this. Each of the lead characters have a particular backstory sequence that uh, that involved the um, their friend that passed away in the pilot, si uh, si Asumi. Bukas sa pagiging uh, bunsong anak unika iha ng mayor, of course kapatid niya si Koki. She was she was quite the proactive girl she is. She was responsible for bringing Koki, Ran, and Suta together. May Bininyagan pa nga ng Bininyagan pa nga ng pangalan nito eh. R-G-B Siya nag-umpisa Siya nang may pangalanan lahat nito. Even their teamwork. Kasi 
Magkakaibigan na sila mo mula pagkabata. Yan, yung tatlong lalaki, si uh, Asumi, and of course si Mari. So, tatlong baba, tatlong lalaki, dalawang babae sila sa barkada. So, they've been involved in practically every civic activity the 24th Ward got into. Pero, ang, well, sad to say, ang, ang pinakamatinding civic activity na 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 involved silang nima is the preservation of their alma mater yung you know, kataka element this elementary school that is about to that was about to be demolished at the time ito rin yung build ito rin yung elementary school na nasunog where 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 Asumi lost her life final scene what itong assistant ni ni Koki si si Susuragawa parang merong pinasok na malaking vial na ganun dun sa isang supercomputer this was the supercomputer that um that was shown in the opening scene of the pilot nga yeah, kumaga select your future tapos merong tapos merong AI na nagbabantay di ba uh, I hope you guys still remember that um, opening scene from the pilot one hour pilot <laughs> So, ito, this is how the episode ended. That's why we're here, mga ka-lifestyle. We're going to break that episode down now, critic sub style. Pace. Well, considering, um, each, um, main character has had his or her own backstory sequence, hindi ano eh. The pacing made me feel that um, hindi boring yung pacing. Okay? Um, bottom line, hindi boring yung pacing ng episode na to, although it consisted of several backstory sequences. Kasi, kung tutusin nyo, masyata bang maaga para mag-backstory ang anime na to. But, clearly, it showed how um, how much of a responsible citizen uh, Asumi was. And she always made it a point to um, to motivate the people closest to her to uh, to achieve a certain goal. Okay? Yeah. Well, the three guys and Mari uh, know, this than, uh, know this than anyone. Kasi sila talaga ang barkada ni Asumi. So, the pacing made yeah the pacing, the pacing made me realize that only just now. So, do I got complaints? Wala. Knowing na ganito pa lang uh, ka-active in uh, in in yeah, civic or social activities si Asumi that yeah you would feel um, you would feel sad na merong ganitong kahalagang miyembro ng sosyodad ng, ng 24th Ward na well, she got her life cut short by, by, an, by a fire of the very elementary school they were trying to uh, they were trying to save kasi uh, at this point in the episode talagang they were totally against uh, the demolishing of their of their alma mater, and it has it has been a vital piece of their of their community's history. Yung elementary school na yon. And well, the pacing on this episode never made me um never made me think that ah uh, backstory. Siya to boring na naman na episode na to. No. The pace, through the pacing, we now know, yeah, how much of a um, proactive citizen Asami was, and she was the binding factor of their, of their, um, of their inner circle. The pacing just made me do a lot of deep dives. Okay, plot wise. <laughs> 
the one and only gearship I saw in this episode was nung nag-usap sila Mari at Suta then Suta suddenly um, opens up to Mari about about uh, what they saw during that phone call no, why did I call us a gearship? simple lang may nasabihan na ang tatlong bi ang, ang isa sa tatlong bida about uh, what what caused them to um to ju- to become to become a team of superheroes one day just to save just to save a lot of people and um yeah he was citing Asomi that phone call eh hindi naman kapaniwala si Mari kasi Patay ni kaibigan natin para, para sa mga katawag sa inyo. Uh, much less, tell you what's about to happen. So, kahit, siya, kahit si Mari, hindi naman kapaniwala. So, by the end of that conversation, she just told Shuta that it was just a prank call. When you go back to that gear shift, you're gonna say to Mari, Mari, that's not a good idea, Okay. Mukhang may concrete proof na that there's that uh, someone has tampered with Asumi's number and made that call to to those three. So you can say that through this gearship, you can tell Mari to uh, no, not to jump to conclusions, right? Not to jump to conclusions this early. <laughs> On that gear shift that we saw, well, you can tell later on that Mari might regret that um, uh, that conclusion she made there. It will have implications later on in this anime. Plot-wise, hindi ko masabi malinis. Kasi dami backstory sequences. Pero, um, these were quick back stories talagang um pina pinahapyaw lang sa atin kung ano yung naging buhay ni Asami before she died on what kind of a person she was before she um before her life got her life unfortunately got cut short so planchado ang plot it's the type of iron out plot that will not you going like this I back story bakit ang aga no <laughs> ngayon alam na natin kung anong klaseng tao si, si, si Asumi how she lived her life so through, through the eyes of her um, of her what's called this of her bereaved friends the um her immediate inner circle Kaya, nung before the final scene, sa, um, subconsciously siguro, sinabi sa kanya ni Asumi na, hey, if it, weren't for, if it weren't for this restaurant of yours, baka, baka mortal na magkaaway yung tatlong yan. Uh, it's undeniable. These are, well, we got a superhero team here. Right? If there's anything this this iron, this well ironed out plot is telling me, it's this. We now know the source of inspiration of these um of these three main protags. Walang iba kundi si Asumi. And they're, they're heroes right now because of her. Whether it be her voice or someone imitating it, it's still Asumi. So you gotta hand it to the well ironed out plot. So peace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode, mga lifestyle. Whether you like it or not, I'm gonna expect great things from this anime from this point onwards. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, Tokyo 24th Ward, episode 2. Maybe contemplate. Two thumbs up! Based on the final scene, ano pwedeng explain natin sa anime na to? 
Hmm. I only got one one solid theory. What whoever is imitating Asumi, Susurugawa is behind it. Now, I hope it's for the better, but I'm also expecting the worst. Pwede ring ah uh, minamunipula lang ang tatlong ang tatlong barakong bida for their own interests. Or maybe Susurugawa is all uh, is behind it all kasi mukhang may full access siya rito sa supercomputer na to. Looks like she's got full access to it. Kasi meron siya malaking bahay na tapos basa na lang niyang isinaksak doon sa slot na yun at ikinasa. I don't know what's I don't know what's uh I don't know what's going to happen. Pero Susurugawa right now is the key to all of um to I think to every little secret the three uh, the three main protagonists need to know. Kung bakit sila naging super bakit one uh in just one day they went into superhero mode just to stop this um to stop two accidents from happening. Yan yun ang gusto ko malaman now. So, this episode now serves as a build-up for episode 3, which as I am hoping na we can we can go back to slam-bang action like in the pilot. Ang ganda kaya na start ng anime na to. Tapos, uh, may build-up pang ganito, then, well, I hope it doesn't disappoint me. Okay? Cloverworks had a um, track record last year of disappointing fans with certain episodes. Best examples, The Promised Neverland Season 2 and Shadows House Season 1. So, yun ang thoughts ko for the next episode. Kaya, well, tutukan pa natin. So, again, Tokyo 24th Ward, Episode 2. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga ka lifestyle. Hmm. Cloverworks original, ha? Hmm. Lalo kong kikilatisin ito. Patreon! Wait for my next upload. And for those who are still... Who are still glued to the ARD, no worries. Kung hindi nyo pa kaya mag-Patreon or... Um, or at least mag... Uh, at least mag... Maging part ng fan group ko sa Vigo. Chill! Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. And I thought Rust Eater Bisco was 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 was, uh, was better sounding. Nope. <laughs> it's the original uh it's the original Japanese title. There are these there are these people called mushroom keepers na to cultivate the mga mushroom that have been uh, deemed illegal by the Japanese government because ever since that rusting event started um, they were tying the rusting to these mushrooms so yun ang pinapalabas nila ngayon that um, uh, mushrooms are illegal if you um, if you if you eat them you'll get rusted probably a quiet day in Imihama uh, in Imihama Prefecture, there's this uh, doctor named si Neko Yanagi, and he's trying to find a way to um, to cure people of the rusting, even resort to mushrooms. So, um, well, pinadala niya sa black market para makabili siya ng mushrooms. Then, all of a sudden, his, um, the city where he's in gets attacked by one of these mushroom keepers, si Bisco. The most wanted man in all of Japan, and he's a mushroom keeper. 800,000 um, yen, ang pato, ang pato sa ulo niya. He's fascinated by um, uh, by Bisco's method of attack. Archery. Pag tinamaan ka nito, sigurado tutubuhan ka ng mushroom. Neko Yanagi, the scientist that he is, he's fascinated by this. So, wow, it's an endless supply of mushrooms. Sige, kuha ko ng kuha. Now, um, he is also pressured by the uh, by the go by the governor of the uh, by the governor si um, Frukawa Bayon. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna get his name right someday. <laughs> so mukang mukha corrupt ito, okay? Mukang corrupt na politiko talaga. Well, 
Um, the governor did him a favor by lending one of their synthesizing machines to him. Siyempre, para makagawa siya ng sarili niyang gamot or magkaroon ng breakthrough sa sakit na to. Pero, um, mukhang may kapalit eh. So anyway, before this, uh, inimbisi ka na ng governor kung sino yung kung talagang si Bisco nga ito or yung or ibang mushroom keeper. So, while, well, while this was going on, ayun, nakakuha na ng mga napakaraming mushroom si, si Neko Yanagi. Nasundan pala siya ni Bisco. And, wow. Um, I can't believe that's how, that's how this pilot ended. <laughs> right. So, let's break this episode, let's break this pilot down now. Critic sub style. Pace. The pace picked up during um, Bisco's, uh, Bisco's first attack. Yung first wave niya. And um, it, it was a tense atmosphere. Right? It was a tense atmosphere. So um, the pacing, of course, was tense. And do I have complaints? It was a bit justified during the first half of the episode. Kasi, um, the story was concentrating on Neko Yanagi's plight. Kasi doktor ito, and uh, he's only giving out medicines to relieve the symptoms. Wala talagang definite cure. And um, uh, he's now trying to, now he's trying to find a way trying to find a cure for this rusting all by himself. Kasi yung palang mismo ate niya ay meron din. I think they should have done more with the pacing kasi mukhang maganda story eh. Okay? It is set in a post-apocalyptic world. So, yeah, when it comes to apocalypse animes, you better have a uh, you better have a fucking good storyline. Kasi, you really need to explain to the audience how how exactly did the world end up like this. Not just an opening scene where when a humongous explosion occurred, then there's a huge, then there's a, then there's a moon-sized crater now on in Tokyo, which of course devastates, uh, devastates the entire city. And now in its, Nearly in its place is this moon-sized crater. Um, they could have utilized the pacing even, uh, even more by probably um, showing the root cause of the explosion. But overall, the pacing is quite decent for an apocalypse anime. Flow naman. Kasi, hmm, I only saw one gear shift here. This was when, this was when Negoyanagi saw Bisco for the first time. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, I could feel it in my, in my bones that this was the gear shift that triggers, that will trigger the anime. Trigger the entire uh, storyline of the anime. Probably he sees Negoyanagi as Bisco being the key to all this. Kasi, binibili niya yung materials, yung materials niya from the black market. Kasi nga, illegal. Illegal ito. So, well, by getting close to Bisco, he can have all the mushrooms he needs for free. Pwede. Because in the final scene, nag, uh, nagkita sila eye to eye. Sinundag pala siya ni Bisco. Kasi siguro na, nakalata ni Bisco na, na, na scientist siya. Doktor. So, he'll prove valuable. Kaya, that's why I call it the gear shift. Kasi, um, I could really see so many implications uh, rooting that will, uh, ne, that will, in which this is the root. Itong gear shift na to. So, yep. It is a gear shift. Plot lies. A 
I gotta hand it to the plot of this uh this uh pilot, Malinis. It, the way they plotted this pilot is a lot like World's End Harem's pilot. So, uh, but this one started with a disaster. Medyo grandiose ang umpisa. You need a plot as clean and as simple as this for, well, basically for an apocalypse anime. Ngayon, unlike World's End Harem, doon sa, world, sa pilot ng World's End Harem, merong clear explanation, clear explanation as to how how the main protag uh, ended up in a world full of in a world of five billion women, and there are only five five of them men on the planet. May clear explanation doon. But this one, it just started out with the with the disaster itself. No. Um, it's not a clear, it didn't clearly explain it eh. Pero, pinakita yung aftermath ng disaster na to. So, yep, there, there's, a, there's a sickness going on called the rusting. It's a lot, the progression can be compared to Deep Insanity, The Lost Child. Parang ganun yan. So what with the ad ni Turjan nagkaroon ng bigla ng malaking buta sa sa Antarctica. It's called the asylum. Doon lumabas yung Randolph syndrome, yung sakit na nilalabanan nila doon ngayon. Pero dito um yeah, they could have done more with the plot. They could have done more with the plot. Pero ang um, uh, the only consolation we have here, it's well, it's a clean one. It's a very, it's a really clean one. So, base flow and plot. I almost didn't tell the um, the pacing from the plot. Cause yeah, I really had a, I really had a a moderate size complaint with the pacing. So, medyo na apekto, medyo yeah, na apekto yung plot. So, in as much as na hindi ko ma-distinguish eh, kung malinis yung plot or na okay ba yung pacing or whatever. So, pretty decent, um, pretty decent pilot for, yeah, for an apocalypse anime. So, Sabi ko Bisco Episode 1. Hmm. Bakit? If it weren't for the clean plot, I might have given this. I might have given this a low rating. It would probably be the first time I would give a pilot episode a very a, a low rating. But the one, I think the one that uh, saved this episode was the plot itself. Because um, undeniable, malinis ang plot. Although there were. There were, may, may, may mga kulang eh. May mga kulang pa na I think, uh, I think the animators left out. Parang, okay, nagkaroon ng disaster. Na, uh, uh, what's it called this? Extinction level disaster. Pero, paano nagsimula to? Oh, no, the ground wouldn't just blow up like that. So, Unless, unless there's a super volcano hidden uh, hidden under Tokyo, hindi. Masa na pinakita uh, extinction level explosion. Then when the dust settled, there's now a moon-sized crater in Tokyo. Tapos merong kumakalag na parang hangin na puro puro kalawang ang dala and if you get a whiff of this uh, this rusty wind, you contract that disease known as the rusting. So, how do we arrive at this? Ba? That's what the pacing should have done. Kumbaga, 
Oh, okay, sige. Ah, pakita niyo kung paano. Pakita niyo kung paano na uh, um, yung disaster na yung yung disaster na pinagmulan ng mundong to. But you gotta show the cause. So, the one thing that saved this episode was the plot. It was I can't deny it. It's a it's a clean plot. Nonetheless, kaya yun lang ang binigay kong rating. If if the, if the studio gave us a, 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 a clearer explanation of how of how the setting of Sabiko with Bisco arrived at this, I might have given it to two thumbs up. Kasi mag, mag, I thought, hmm, ang storyline ito ah. I'm gonna take it on. But, I got a bit disappointed with the pilot. But I still had to be objective. The plot saved this episode. So again, Sabi Kui Bisco, episode one. Could have been a lower rating, mga lifestyle. But oh, we'll see in the next episode. I don't want to count this anime out right now. So, because it's just one episode. Unlike Unlike uh, unlike some normies and weebs out there who are more than willing to judge an entire anime just by one episode. <laughs> nope. I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch this until the very end. So uh, let's give this a, let's give this anime a chance. Maganda yung ano niya eh. Maganda yung, oh. You see the big picture? Maganda yung storyline. Maganda yung storyline. So Patreon! Wait for my next upload, and well, for anybody out there who's still, who's or who, who's still dependent on the A on the ARD. Sorry, the CHD for um for the latest anime reviews. Oh, chill, chill lang. No worries. But I strongly suggest you um you better you better get on either Patreon or Bigo muna. Para may idea na kayo kung ano magiging review ko sa anime na yun. But, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews on this digest. Well, we, all, we start the episode with uh, a really bizarre opening scene na Involves the two main protags, okay? Si Shato, babae, at si Ryongha, yung lalaki. I seriously thought he was going to kill Shato. Pero, <laughs> he pins her down just to, just to ask her out. From his own words, he's flirting with her. Then it came... Uh, what a series of accomplished missions for uh, for Shato na na may kinalaman si Ryong ha judging from the way Ryong ha is helping uh, Shato uh, finish her um, her her uh, bounty hunting jobs we can say na masugit siya maniligaw Then one day, um, kinamission sila ng, ng camp, po, yung company na kilabibilangan ni, ni Shato ay kinamission ng isang kliyente. The target is Ryongha himself. Ito palang si Ryongha, he was part of um, sort of a, a triad-like criminal organization. Pero, uh, Disbanded na uh, for um, disbanded five years ago because of an incident he um well he was involved with. Dahil lahat ng higher ups ng 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 organization na to ay itinumba niya, including yung pinaka godfather nila. Kinumpronta ni Shato si Ryongha, then pinakita niya. This is the um this is supposedly my next client. 
Ayun. Well, biglang biglang uh, nawala yung ngiti ni, ni Ryong ha. And well, basically tinanong ni ni Shato kung ano ang terms niya. And of course, um, well, he forces himself upon her. Well, in medyo subtle pa nga eh. Um, Ryong ha grabs Shato's arm Then, nung nag, <laughs> nag uh, siyempre, papa lang yun. Bounty hunter eh. So, maybe, well, he um, secures her in such a way na nakaakap na siya sa kanya. And, well, sinabi lang niya yung terms niya. On Christmas Eve, date tayo. <laughs> so, Christmas Eve came, ayun, nag-date nga sila. Pero, Yeah, medyo naaanibad ba lang pa sa kanya si si Shato siyempre iwas tapos uh, pag kinakusap ni Ryonga eh, ang sungit-sungit alright pero eh, for Ryonga this is already a date he even tried to walk her to the train to sa platform mismo pero ayaw ni Shato and uh, suddenly he asked Uh, I, need, I need to confirm something. Tapos bigla niya inakap si Shato, then uh, he just said, no wonder. Iba ang scent po sa akin. Because everyone else smells putrid to me. And no fear to the final scene. It was parang backstory. <clears throat> It was an, uh, an accident scene wherein may yung driver halatang halatang binari sa ulo and there was a child in the in the back seat of the car na parang natutulog so nakita ng mga polis eh tinanong nila sa sa bata uh, little girl what's your name and well that's when the episode ended but I figured this is probably Shato let's break this episode down now critics hub style shall we pace in well opening scene tense ang pacing tapos biglang slows down then every time every time Ryongha is involved in a scene the pace picks up but when he is with Shato the pace slows down I got a I got a complaint when it comes to the pacing Simulat sa pool pa, nung naging anime fan ako, hindi ako talaga agree sa roller coaster na pacing. Because, it may have completely destroyed um, the storyline of this anime. At this point, um, nalalabuan ako sa storyline. Because of the pacing. Kasi, fast and I'm slow, and fast and I'm slow. Kaya naman hindi ako agree sa, gan- sa ganitong klaseng pacing. Never. So, if you want to, um, if you want to, um, what would you call this? Give the pacing a rhythmic, um, a rhythmic type. Hindi dapat ganito eh. It, you can compare it to an ECG graph. Parang ganun eh. Espe, yung ECG graph na laki, yung, yung graph sa ECG na nakikita nyo pag merong inaatake sa puso parang ganun up, down, up, down, up, down tapos biglang PEED namatay yung pasyente flatline I would rather have the pacing go like this um, a few scenes fast then medyo slow ng konti for a few scenes then pace picks up again yung may peaks yung merong definite peaks and valleys hindi yung sabi ko sa inyo parang 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 uh, grab ang ECG ng isang uh, ng isang ina-attack isang, ng isang naka-heart attack na eh hindi 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 ko ba ganun uh, I never agreed to that kind of pacing even even when I was just a kid when I was starting out uh, becoming when I started my road to becoming an anime fan No. Ah, talagang medyo 
turn off ako. Medyo turn off ako sa pacing ng episode na to. Kasi, kailangan. Ganon. Ganon. Flow naman. First gear shift here was when, ah, uh, yeah, the opening scene. Nung, ah, uh, I, I believe, ito yung unang pagkikita nila ni, yun eh, nila Ryongha at ni, ni Shato. And, wow, in a, in a very, um, bizarre way. Kasi, parang, ano, lumalabas sa scene yun, isa target nila eh. Pero naunahan ni Ryongha si Shato. Eh, yeah, probably right there. And then talagang, talagang natipan na yun si, si Shato. Kasi kung hindi, baka doon pala tinumba na niya eh. Okay? But wh- why did I call this a gear shift? Well, it triggered the anime. Okay? This is probably the scene that will, that, uh, that, Uh, yeah, it that triggered the the entire anime storyline. Pero I don't think uh, they should have uh, showed that first. Kung baga, dapat mo na siguro ipinakita nila yung circumstances leading to that opening scene. Parang ganon. So, well, it's still a gear shift, right? Final gear shift. Dalawa lang yon. Was when well. Ryonga finally laid down his terms para makasundo niya si si Shato. Why did I call this a gear shift? Kasi you can clearly see the intention of Ryonga here. He just wants to ask her out. Ito na ito na si Shato paranoid. Shato prob- oh, probably sees uh, Ryonga also as competition. Kasi bounty hunter siya. If she has an assassin as deadly as Ryongha, um, always, um, uh, always depriving her of a potential huge paycheck, she should be worried of him. Pero, based on how, wow, how helpful Ryongha is all throughout the episode, With her bounty hunting jobs, um, hindi naman, hindi naman, hindi naman siya sinisingilan. Hindi naman siya, uh, hinihinga ng kapalit. He's doing this because he, because he wants to be noticed by Shadow. It's a gear shift, right? Kasi, you can now, you can clearly see, Uh, Ryonga's intentions with Shato. Pero, Shato uh, is still paranoid of uh, of, of Ryonga being, wow, do, probably Japan's deadliest assassin. So, yeah, I think she still sees him as competition. So, these two gear shifts that I saw, Maha Lifestyle, will have implications, both of them. In this entire anime, don't dala mong ito. Whether we like it or not, plot-wise, mm, planchado. Bakit? Despite having a short backstory final scene, parang ano eh? Um. If you really want to express the storyline of an uh, of an anime, you gotta have um, a decently ironed out plot at least. Eto planchado yung plot, kasi we started with an opening scene that um, that well, we're in Ryongha is actually flirting with Shato in in a, in a typical assassin way. Uh, Uh, I found that I found that disturbing actually. <laughs> Then all of a sudden yung story has Shato breaking in these bounty hunting jobs um one after the other with uh with the help of Ryongha. 
even though she doesn't ask for it. <laughs> so, para na arrive dito, di ba? Para na arrive dito. One thing is clear because of the well, because of this um, decently ironed out plot. Ryonga's intention with Shato has has nothing in return. Talagang umaakit siya ng ligaw kay Shato. If there's anything this this plot will tell you, hindi niya he, she, he doesn't see Shato as a target, much less a threat to his own life. Although, yeah, Shato has that ability to um, to to take him down. Kasi nga, bounty hunter, bounty hunter siya. At talagang malaki ang patong sa ulo ni Ryong, ha? Shato is well aware of that. So, based low in plot, they all came together for this episode. Pero talagang, ano eh, I really have a big complaint about the pacing. The rest, it's got a pretty, it's got a pretty good storyline, and may romance complications pa. So, Love of Kill episode one. I hate to read it that way, pero talagang. Sinasabi ko sa inyo, mga lifestyle ang sumira sa pilot ng anime na to is the pacing. Talagang, um, how did the storyline arrive at the opening scene? Paano nagkatagpo ang mga landas nila for the first time? Then, ayun, nag, nag, well, from that opening scene, nag-progress na into Shato raking in the bounty uh, one successful bounty hunting mission after another eh it's all because of Ryong ha pero hindi naman siya humingi ng tulong dito na napapantot lang siya ni Ryong ha na oy na, na, na may trabaho siyang ganito may trabaho siyang ganito well Ryong finishes the job for her all all she has to do is to pick up the paycheck but talagang Roller coaster pacings will, yeah, based on, based on my experience, it can really destroy an episode. Mabuti na lang yung, um, uh, yung storyline ng, ng, ng anime na to, eh, it's a really good one. It's a really good one. Considering na, we just, uh, we just previewed ang Satsok ni Soko. Sa, nung, nung fall eh assassin din ang ang bida doon so we can't compare that to, to this one kasi this is a straight up uh, you can call it you can call it a, uh, yeah, a crime thriller kasi it involves an assassin and a bounty hunter eh, ang, ang ansatsok ni Soko easy ka yun eh so you can't compare you can't compare this to that totally they're two totally different um, storylines, basically. Kaya, you have to take this anime as it is. Pero, for this, for for its pilot, muntik na masira dahil sa pacing. But, um, the one, the one aspect of this uh, episode that saved it were, was the plot. And, a little by um by the flow yung gear shifts eh, it just proved to me that it has a it has a really good it has a really good storyline and wow kasi um assassin then romance hmm. but we will still don't worry mga lifestyle patreon we will still keep tabs on this anime um, during the course of its run. Don't worry. Kasi it's just the first episode. Pero yun, yun talaga ang rating ko eh. I cannot give it a, a higher rating because of, because of its roller coaster pacing which I do not 
agree. So again, Love of Kill episode 1. Rough st- Rough start for this anime. Really rough start. Patreon, wait for my next upload. Mga lifestyle, if you're still um if if you still couldn't um afford to be on Bigo or on Patreon, okay lang. There's this one, the CHD. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Oh, continuation. Um, they're trying to pacify the um, the uh, the chaos that's been going on. Then, um, Sanzo made this sudden move of well, just shooting one of the um, one of the zombies in the head. Eh, the daughter of this zombie took offense to it. So, what? Well, I don't know what. I don't know what ulterior what ulterior motives um uh Hazel and Gat have. Pero looks like it's working. Kasi right after this, uh it's obvious na sinundan nila yung yung apat. Kasi they were proverbially uh ran out of town because of Sanzo's actions. Our four main protags had a run in with a with a band of demons that are well well uh, to the demons, these four are public enemy number one. Okay, Team Sayuki. I, I can call them Team Sayuki. But they just they, they just really went after their heads. Pero, in comes Hazel and Kat. Ayun, providing the assistance. But, eventually, um, tinapos, silang, tinapos ni Sanzo ang mga demonyo to dahil, well, na-hurt ang kanyang pride nung sinabi ni Hazel na magtago siya muna sa isang tabi. So yun, pakita ng lakas, ang gago. <laughs> then, ayun na, nag, nagsalo-salo muna sila, bumalik sila, pumunta sila sa isang, sa ibang bayan naman. Oh, there's, this, there's this restaurant, so kumain sila. Then, uh, a group of townspeople from there, humingi, well, nakilala si Hazel, si Bishop Hazel. Humingi na tulong sa kanya. There was, there's this, um, this band of demons who are taking um, taking their young women away at kinukunong doon sa hideout nila okay sabi ni uh, Hazel on on all of their behalf sige we're gonna help tingin nila <laughs> sabi nila 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 gokot gojo ha paano kami napasok dito <laughs> but eventually go they tagged along, especially si Sanzo. Eh, sinabi na rin ni Sanzo dito na tutulong tayo. But eventually, they, they took out all the demons, pero not without, um, it's called this, not without a little bit of friction between the two factions. Yung grupo ni Hazel and Kat, and of course, Team Sayuki. Hazel wanted to kill uh, wanted to kill even the hostages. Say, can you, uh, in, from his point of view, no problem. I'll just revive them. I'll just resurrect them. Eh, well, before he could actually accomplish this one, naunahan na siya nila, nila Gojo, Go, nila Gojo at Goku. Pinagpuputol lang mga ulo ng mga, mga hostage takers sa isang iglap lang. So, uh, they just said, we want to do this our own way. And, well, in a sure naman ni Hazel in the end, this, this was the final scene actually. In a sure naman ni Hazel na, he was just bluffing. Pero, all of, Team Sayuki doesn't buy it. Especially si Sanzo. Yung sinabi na lang niya, while he was, um, while he, while he shot a surviving demon in the head, humans aren't just numbers. He's got a point there. Let's break this episode down now. Critic sub style. Pace. Undoubtedly, the action of the pacing is vintage Sayuki. Because in the end, there are always um. How does every episode of 
of all the Sayuki um, seasons that I've seen, para dami yung trust issue. Eh. <laughs> the pacing will make you will make you feel that, right? Nanat nung uh, nung patapos ng episode, the way they take out these demons, talagang talagang they, they show no mercy when it comes to demons. Silang apat, right? So the pacing will also make you realize that the pacing will pick up in a heartbeat. As long as um, kaon dito. As long as uh, and then, when Sanzo gets involved, the pacing always picks up. <laughs> Do I have complaints? Nope. Kasi it the pacing of this episode eventually gave us um. Uh, Give us an ending that is typical Sayuki. Trust issues. An ending without trust issues doesn't feel like a Sayuki episode at all. To tell you honestly, mga ka lifestyle. Flow naman! Well, first gear shift here was when, um, yeah, was when Sanzo shot that zombie in the head. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, um, This gear shift showed me that um, kumbaga, um the moral dilemma these um the four main protags encounter every day it made me remember all those run-ins with demons that they've had na ganito rin ang scenario there was also um a scene like this in uh the first reload and gun lock. So, pero ang talagang tanda ko yung sa gun lock. Talagang meron meron ganito ring eksena noon eh. Matapos silang tulungan ng mga uh, mga taong bayan na tipulin lahat ng demonyo. The town's people run, the, the town's people run them out. Talagang pinagtabuyan sila. And Basically, because of uh, of their tightly wound moral compasses, ngay, yun ang yun ang hirap sa mi moral compass. If it's too tightly wound, it clouds your judgment. Pero uh, Sanzo being the monk that he is, though, um, the action, the required action is clear here. These are no longer humans, so. The fort can do anything the fuck they want with these um uh, with these zombies. Kahit pugutan na ng ulo, paralin sa ulo. They're empty shells. Pero hindi naiintindihan ng mga ng mga ng mga tao sa ng bayan na to. Um final gear shift was of course the final scene. No. Well, it's a no brainer of a gear shift because this is the gear shift that you would expect from Sayuki. It's not a Sayuki episode without trust issues. <laughs> Based on my experience, okay, mga ka lifestyle, from watching this, uh, this, uh, severely underrated anime franchise. So, these two gear shifts that I saw, the last one, I could feel it in my bones that this will have implications later on. In later episodes, I'm not, if, well, not, it's not necessarily in the next episode, pero in future episodes. Baka mga carry over ito. Plot wise. Hmm. Malinis. Bakit? Kasi... If you look back at the, um, the scene where na uh, mukhang nagmamadali na silang pumunta doon sa hideout, yan na, uh, kasi nagsisiksika na sila doon sa jeep, then, sinabing, one hour earlier, you can't count that as a backstory, ko, uh, guys. You cannot count that as a backstory or even a side story. It's part of the main continuity of the episode. Bumaktrak lang. Hindi ganong... Hindi ganong 
uh, katagal yung yung timeline. It's, it was just one hour ago. The episode just clearly explained to us kung bakit sila nagmamadaling nagma, parang nagmamadali sa kaya na kaya napinida sila magsisi, mag, magsiksikan sa jeep. It's an explainer. It was an explainer scene. Kaya normally explainer scenes are part of the main continuity of an episode. Kaya malinis ang plot. But you gotta have a plot as clean as this to um to make the to make the audience fully understand what was what was actually going on. Bakit uh, napunta na tayo sa ganito? Yun lang yun. So pace, flow, and plot. We all came together for this episode, folks. So Sayuki Reload Zero In, episode two. I'll tell you my biggest reason why, guys. Kasi the pacing and of course the overall plot of the episode that stood out for me. Kasi it totally illustrated, okay, both these aspects aspects totally illustrated what Sayuki is all about. What the entire what this entire anime franchise is all about. Right? If you still remember um, Sayuki Reload, humiwalay sa grupo muna si Sanzo because he felt that um, that Goku, uh, Hakai, and Gojo couldn't understand him. So, one day, he decided to he decided to um, to separate himself from the group Muna and join another group. So, when the time came na um, bagay, that he he needed those three more than those three needed him, bumalik siya sa grupo. So, it's Team Sayogi again. There, there was that episode wherein, yun nga, Sumama muna si Sanzo sa ibang grupo at iniwan sa area yung tatlo. There was an episode. Gano'n lang final scene. Then for a good probably four to five episodes talagang Team Sayuki minus Sanzo. So, no. Sanzo, would, Sanzo wouldn't do that anymore. Bakit? The other three, especially si Hindi, si Hakai talagang talagang gets na niya si gets na niya yung ano yung mindset ni Sanzo eh. Especially si ano si uh, si Goku. Alright? Because Sanzo because um he considers Sanzo to be his ano eh, to be his um to be his guardian here on earth. So unti unti na niya na intindihan yung yung uh, on how Sanzo thinks on the fly on how uh, what you call this kahit tatamad-tamad mag, uh, makipag-away si Sanzo because he is a monk nag-iisip ito nag-iisip ng paraan para para matalo ang kalaban then, uh, then nakik- makikita niya na lang eh basta na lang siya sisingit sa away and just ends it all he did that here in this episode so Eh well, pero yeah. There are there are still trust issues, but it it ain't a Sayuki episode without those trust issues. <laughs> without those um um moral codes clashing in the heat of battle. Although they are a team, silang apat. They uh, they have their own moral codes. Eh. Pero in the end, everything works out fine. The good guys still win. So again, Sayuki Reload Zero in Episode 2. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime franchise. For the second time I've, uh, I've reviewed Sayuki. But, yep, I'm having a blast. No pun intended. So, 
well, what are we going to do now? Of course, wait for the next episode. We will wait for next week and watch that one. Huh? It's been a long time since I've done that. <laughs> Patreon! Wait for my next upload. And, um, sa inyo mga ka-lifestyle na na hanggang ngayon ni eh, inaantabay pa, nagaantabay pa rin sa, sa bagong CHD, chill lang. Ha? Ah. I'm, I'm not pressuring you, but I am recommending it to you na to, to subscribe on Patreon, to subscribe on my Patreon for uh, for the for the raw versions of these reviews, or stick it up with me on Beagle. Okay? Enter um enter at least the um the free membership there. Na hinanda ko para sa inyo. But in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. If you're familiar with um with either British history or um the works of Sir William Shakespeare, you will instantly tell na binis ito sa sa Richard the Third, right? But Richard the Third itself was based on historical fact. It was based on, of course, the War of the Roses between the houses of Lancaster and York. Now, nakupisang Pilot introducing us to, of course, the main protag, si um, si Prince of uh, uh, si Richard. Because his father got ousted. I mean, his grandfather got ousted uh, uh, as uh, <coughs> as the king. Ang pumalit yung mga taga Lancaster. Sila, uh, I think, yeah, it was Henry the Fifth. Nakita niya yung yung um, sama ng lobe sa father niya because. By this time, his father should have been king. Next in line, eh. Until pinutol ang pinutol ang reign nila na mga Lancaster. Uh, he made it one of his he made it his ultimate goal for his father to become king. Pero his own mother doesn't like him. Kasi ang paniwala ang paniwala ang nanay niya that uh, that he is a demon child. May sumpa nung bagong panganak pa lang sinumpa na ito ng sinumpa na ni Satanas. Uh, ano niya naman ng ano niya naman ng superstition nung araw. Alright? It's really cruel. His growing years was spent training uh, training in the art of war in um, yeah, soldiering, swordsmanship, horsemanship. Then um, his father suddenly decided to to go into to to go to war against the Lancasters again. One day, uh, he came home at nagulat na lang siya. Richard, is that you? So, talagang kasi by the time his father returned, Richard was already um yeah he's probably a teenager by now. Tinanong ni Richard sa amanya that are you the king now? Something to that effect. But his father said no. Until Parliament no longer recognizes Henry the Sixth as the king, I will never be king. Ginawa lang ni Pinesidin na nila ako as Lord Protector. Siyempre, nadismaya si Richard. Then, he just whispered in his father's ear that you have to keep you have to keep fighting for this. Hindi nakikailan kasi tatlo sila magkakapatid eh. Si Richard ang bunso. Yung dalawa niyang kuya, hindi nakikialam. Pero siya talaga ang nag-instigate. Soon after, his father goes to war again with the Lancaster, against the Lancasters. But this time, nanalo siya. But still, he could not be made king. Kasi nga, buhay pa si Henry VI. So, this enraged, um, kasi, uh, while he was gone, uh, tawag dito? Sinugod sila ng mga, lang, ng mga Lancaster. Kinunong siya. Then, uh, one night, ayun, nabawi ng, nabawi ng ama niya ang, ang tirahan nila. Until, ayun nga, hindi pa rin, ayaw pa rin i-recognize ng parliament ang kanyang ama bilang hari. 
they still recognize Henry the Sixth as the king. So, ano magagawa? But instead of celebrating, pumunta siya sa training room para magsani sa isba isbada. Final scene. Well, <coughs> um, siguro na naramdaman ng tatay niya na well, um, wala yung bunso niyang anak and he knows where to look for him. Ayun, nasa training room nga. Sa underground training room. So, yun nga, sinabi niya na I, vo- that I vowed that I will never retreat from battle. Ito rin ang sinabi ni Richard. Pero, in his brain, here's what, here's what's his exact words. In order for my father to become king, I'll do anything, even slay God. <laughs> Scary. For your benefit, mga ka-lifestyle, we're gonna break this pilot down. Critic sub style. Pace. It was slow all throughout. Kahit may mga... Hindi naman exactly na may pinakitang battle scene, pero nakita na lang ano eh. Uh, nanalo father niya, na, na, natalo father niya. Parang ganun lang yun eh. It, it's not even excruciating eh. The only um, time the pacing became excruciating for me to watch was when... Um, when Richard was... was almost that uh, he was that close to to stabbing William yung namahala sa sa raid sa castle nila and yung um each time Joan of Arc up, makes her uh, appears before him dun, dun lang eh dun lang naging excruciating yung pace every time na na lilitaw sa harapan niya si Joan of Arc At sinasabi sa kanya, No, you are special. <laughs> so, it was really scary. Sometimes. Do I have complaints? Absolutely not. Kasi, ako, well, English literature, well, it's a, it's a thing for us in high school. Kasi, pinag-aralan din namin to eh. So, I'm, I am very familiar with the works of William Shakespeare. And, I know for a fact that Uh, some of William Shakespeare's plays were deemed violent during those times. Remember, this was the Renaissance. His, I, yeah, his two most violent plays were in order, Hamlet, then Richard III. The pacing of this episode, this pilot had um had those had that Shakespearean vibe, although. Although it, it well, bottom line, it was based on a manga, but the manga was based on that play, Richard the Third. So I really had those Shakespearean feels, dito sa pilot na to. It was slow, but um, balanced yung <clears throat> yung tenseness niya. Um, flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when um. <clears throat> was when Richard found this um this white boar na natrap. Why did I call it a gear ship? Don't you know that Richard III is also called the Board of England? Hmm. Now you know. Pero, if I'm wrong on this, comment below right away, okay? Comment below. Prove me wrong. Doon lang galing yung moniker niya. Uh, historically speaking, may alaga daw sa baboy ramo na hindi niya talaga pinababaya ang i- ikatay para kainin. Well, of course, well, yeah, he, it's the king's pet. You, you may, you, um, you slaughter it for dinner, the king will, the king will have you slaughtered. <laughs> Ganun lang yun. So, no one can touch it. Second gear ship was when, ayun na, Uh, when Richard almost uh, almost stabbed the um, si William uh, akala, akala ko tutuloy niya eh akala ko tinuluyan na niya eh why did I call this a gear ship? <coughs> just goes to show you how smart the main pro tag is even under um, even uh, even the, the temptation to kill is there 
he actually used discretion. Final gear shift was the final scene. Nung nag-usap silang mag-ama. Why did they call this a gear shift? Because he, but like I said a while ago, when I described the final scene, Richard said something morbid here. To ensure, he said something to this effect. To ensure my father's right to become king, I will even slay God. <laughs> so, eh, well, if there's anything this gearship can tell you, it's this. Mukhang totoo ang branding sa kanya bilang bilang demon child. <laughs> That was one. That was one morbid gear shift. So these three gear shifts that I saw, definitely, um, we've seen the origin story of Richard, the yung, uh, yung main protag. All of them will play a role in this anime. Plot lies. Malinis. It's the origin story of the uh, of the main protag himself. Which now be it is now the main which well it's now the main continuity of this pilot. Kung ano yung pinagmulan at pinaghuhugutan ng ng bida, we can now uh, we, we have seen it in this pilot because bata pa lang, uh, Richard's goal was to make his father king, but historically yeah he did become king himself. He was more violent than his father, actually. So, you gotta have a really clean plot to make the viewer understand what um, what the main protag went through, what the main protag's uh, how how did his um, his current mindset got um, was shaped. Tito sa pilot, ah, pilot eh. Uh, pilot episode set the tone for the entire anime. And you really need a clean plot to um, to make everyone understand that this it, that the story of this anime starts here. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. I'm a sucker for English literature. Kito niyo naman sa Morgan the Patriot, Diba? So, Requiem of the Rose King, Episode 1. Isip pa ako. Oh! <laughs> Two thumbs up! Let's... I'm gonna leave back for a while. Excuse me. So, I'm gonna... Contemplate right now on how this anime is going to run. Well, basically, they're going to follow the manga. Pero... Like I said a while ago, it would be nicer if they injected, um, if they injected things from the original, from the original material, the, the play itself, Richard the Third, para maintindihan ng current, uh, current generation of anime fans. Well, basically, give them a history lesson. Basically, give them a history lesson. If not from from Shakespeare's play or the manga, get it from historical facts. Kulang sa history lesson ang ang current generation of anime fans. Kulang na kulang. And this anime may be a solution for them. At least, um, it's a little bit historically accurate kasi the anime is based on a manga. The manga is based on um, Richard III, one of William Shakespeare's greatest plays. It's a masterpiece. So, it would be even nicer kung ibibase sila, kung kukuha sila ng uh, mga bagay-bagay from the play or from history itself, from historical facts. That would make this anime even more unique. Pero, kung tama naman eh. Kung tama naman yung pagpo-portray nila ng, ng, ng British history here. Because, it's focused on the War of the Roses. Yeah, the, house, the houses of Lancaster and York 
going at it. Uh, talagang talagang fight to the death ang dalawang ang dalawang angka na to. The Lancasters are represented by a red rose. The House of York naman by a white rose. Kaya nga, War of the Roses ang tawag. But in this one, nanalo ang York. So, the white rose is flying high over England. Pero, ang hirap nga lang, Parliament just could just couldn't uh, find it in their hearts to um, to recognize uh, Richard's father as the king now. In-overthrow nga niya si Henry, Henry VI, but but um, stubborn as they may be, Parliament still recognizes Henry as the king. So, where, where does this anime will... Where will this anime lead us? Uh, yeah. A great storyline is, uh, is in store for us. Bottom line. So again, Requiem of the Rose King, Episode 1. Two thumbs up. First two thumbs up for this. Wow, this Shakespearean adaptation of the lifestyle. Basically, I am going to have a blast reviewing this one. 24 episodes. Requiem of the Rose King is a 24 episode run. So this is going to it's going to uh, it's going to run well into well into next spring. So gandang main state for spring. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those who are still uh who are still glued to the ARD and still couldn't um still couldn't afford to um to subscribe to either my Patreon or follow me on Bigo. No worries. Oi. Sa Bigo, meron akong free option dun. Join kayo. Exclusive content. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest.